I'm Chef Justin Sutherland. I'm on the hunt to tell untold BIPOC stories in the food space. Today, I'm in Atlanta to meet with two people who epitomize black excellence in entrepreneurship, Derek Hayes and Pinky Cole. Together, they use their food and their platforms to change the lives of black people across the city. This is Taste the Culture. So I've had experiences myself when I walk into meetings and I sit at the table and they see a black kid with a multi-million dollar business, they think they could just tell me anything. Right. Being a black man in America with over 40 some tattoos on his body, you got, I'm you not, got to tell me. exactly, <laughs> we're not what America is used to looking at. Yep. We are the biggest stereotype of saying, what are you doing in this room? Right. I'm an entrepreneur, yep. I'm a CEO. When I walk into meetings, you might have your suit on looking like how you want to look. Right. I'm coming in with my ones, <laughs> my too. jeans, my jewelry, and I'm saying to myself, let's talk business. Right. There aren't many people who personify perseverance like Derek Hayes, the owner of Big Dave's Cheesesteaks. Long days, long nights, and a drive to succeed that few can match has made Derek's business among the most successful in Georgia. First of all, first of all, wow. I mean, I feel like your original location could have fit right here. Could have, yeah, definitely. My ideal spot, the reason why I wanted to lo go to a location that was bigger yep. is because, for one, you got Georgia State that's across, and right. we're now in the inner city of Atlanta, where now I could pack the house. Yep. But COVID had a different color. You gonna show me where the magic is I'm made, I'm about though? to walk you into where the magic happens. Okay. This is my family, famous. Cheesesteak egg rolls. Okay. He got chicken and beef on the board. We hand roll those every day. People wow. are crazy about those egg rolls. Wow. We go through about 10,000 pounds of grass-fed beef a week. And all of my cooks are geared up and trained to be able to handle room tracks that come their way. And from the outside world, right. it's like a fish tank. They can yep, see it all. You guys can be honest. Do you guys really like working for this guy? <laughs> He's a good one. Love it. <laughs> So I know that a really, really big uh, part of Big Dave's Cheesesteaks is this seasoning. I hear it's a secret. I hear it comes from the family. Uh, tell me a little bit about that. So I took a piece of seasoning from a lot of people in my family that enjoyed eating their spices. So one was my mother, yep. one was my father, one was my grandfather. But now the world gets to eat a part of history every time they come into Big Dave's Cheesesteaks that came from my family. So I that's think really that's cool. a big, you know, big deal, a big privilege to what I'm building. Derek slangs more than just steak. He's serving up buffalo chicken and even salmon. It's a well-oiled machine. But it wasn't always this way. In fact, Big Dave's came from the humblest of beginnings. All right, Derek, so we're out here in a gas station parking lot. What's so special about this location for you? I just, I really want to get into the story about why we're here. I was looking all over Atlanta for a location. Nobody wanna rent me a space. Right. I literally had no traffic, didn't know the area. Mm -hmm. We're about like maybe 25 minutes outside of Atlanta. Mm -hmm. A lot of people said, nah, this ain't the location, this ain't the location. But I felt like this is the place where I need to start at. So let me show yeah, you. Let me see. Let me see exactly, why you felt that. Yeah, let me show you exactly what it is. So this door right here was all electric, of course. Yep. But we had so much traffic, we broke the motor in it. So our customers literally used to have to slide <laughs> the door. That's not a bad problem to have. <laughs> In 2014, I sat on this counter right here, and I took a picture just like this, right? Yeah. And I told the world, y'all gonna know who Derrick Hayes is. I used to be the cashier, I was the accountant, the fry cook, cooked on the grill. Do you think it was the struggle? I mean, what about this location do you think gave you, you know, the empire that you have now? So, in the midst of me building that, my grandfather got diagnosed with COPD, and he was fighting a, a little lung cancer. I promise you, when that man died, I went on turbo mode. Right. It was nothing that nobody can tell me about making it happen for my family and the people that was around me that I wanted to help. Mm -hmm. And this location provided that. You know, at the end of the day, though, I mean, the building's just a building. And I think yeah. what's really important and impressive about you is, I mean, you took the lessons that you learned in here that taught you, you know, that the business school that you provided for yourself in this location is what's allowed you to, to, to move on. Derek is one of the most passionate people I have ever met. He's been through so many hardships in his life, like losing his grandfather and his father to cancer. 
but he's pushed through it all to become an outstanding businessman and philanthropist. Well, I, I will say that when you walked up, I had the mochas on this morning and I changed. And I was like, dang, I'm glad I changed. Uh, hey, but, but, but the sneaker game for yeah. me is important because how you show up is how people take you. So when you come in your ones and your hat and how you are, that makes an investor, a businessman, anybody looking at you to say, I know that person is comfortable in their skin. 100%. And I think that's a, a, one of the things that we've been able to be, again, comfortable being yourself, you comfortable be walking yourself. in as the CEO that you are, not the CEO that they, you, they perceive that you should be. You're making cheesesteaks, you're making egg rolls, you're celebrating the Philly, but what brought you from Philly to Atlanta? So when my father got sick with lung cancer, he couldn't get in a, a good cancer system in Philadelphia, so okay. he went to Emory University. Yep. So that made me leave my job that I was working at the Postal Service, come down here and fight with him for six months. And when my dad you know, eventually lost his life, Atlanta just felt like the place for me because right. it was a dreaming city. It was where you could make everything happen. Yep. It was the black mega capital, and I felt like this was my shot to come here and restart my life. And we talked about you know, how Atlanta is just this hub of, of black excellence, black entrepreneurship, and you're, now you're a big part of that. And man, you know, what you just said was the blessing of it all because I didn't do this for that. You know, me caring about the communities and caring about people and caring about my staff and wanting to see people do better. Mm -hmm. Like, for instance, I'm gonna make an example. When I started this location, none of my employees had benefits. Right. All of my employees had benefits. It's amazing. Now, me and another business owner from Saudi Vegan, Pinky Cole, we're doing a life insurance initiative. Heard about that. Yeah, that we're now paying life insurance on 25,000 black men that make $30,000 less than income. And yeah, that's not an easy task. Right. But guess what? Me growing up in Philly, I've seen people get murdered. Mm -hmm. I've seen people get shot. I've seen mothers cry. It's sad to say this way, when you don't have life insurance or you don't have the finance right. spit in the ground, it becomes a debt. It's the trauma that I came from, but I'm embracing it because mm -hmm. I'm able to help other people through my trauma in the right way. You know, getting to spend today with Derek uh, was incredible and really very inspirational for me. It's amazing to see, you know, another black man doing what he's doing for his city, standing up for his family, his community. Uh, it's just been an overall amazing experience. Generosity, incredible passion, these qualities describe Derek Hayes, but they also apply to the owner of another Atlanta food staple, the slutty vegan herself, Pinky Cole. Nobody knows more about building a foundation for success than Pinky. And her and Derek's life insurance initiative is only part of the story. Since founding Slutty Vegan in 2016, this meatless maven has worked tirelessly to provide mouth-watering vegan food any time of day, all while uplifting her community and affecting change. Justin! Pinky! How are you? What's up, girl? How are you? I'm doing very well. Oh. So good to see you. Good Welcome to, see you. to the Slut House. Uh-oh. <laughs> Your crew is lit. There's nothing quite like a slutty vegan welcome. And by the way, they don't just turn up like that for me. Everybody who walks through the door gets the same treatment. Pinky has built her empire on big energy, provocative messaging, and of course, a good vegan burger. So I don't know if you've heard anything about Slutty Vegan, but oh, yeah. we have these crazy names. Yep. We got the Sloppy Toppy, the Menage a Trois, the Fussy Hussy, yeah. the One Night Stand, and the Hollywood Hooker, and a whole bunch of other items. So imagine something sweet, something spicy, something savory, and it feels good, and it's guilt-free, yep. right? So you're not eating a dead animal, right. and it's something that's a healthier option to the things that you eat on a day-to-day. -day. But uh, America's favorite is the one night stand. Okay. So I want you to try that. Today. Okay, so can I have You'll can I have a one it. night stand menage a trois together? Oh, you nasty! <laughs> no, now the flair is next level, but I couldn't wait to get behind the line and learn more about the food that makes it all possible. All right, you're loved up. Let's go. Show me. So I have our lovely employees AJ and Nikita right here. AJ and Nikita, hey, Justin, right thank you for having me in your kitchen. So I just want you to grab some bacon. Vegan bacon. This is our vegan bacon. But wait, before you put that there, you gotta taste it. For me, like, the most incredible part of that is I still feel like I'm chewing through some fat. Like when you eat bacon, there's two different textures. You know, you have the meat, you have the fat, it kind of dissolves in your mouth. Yeah. And this mimics this, I mean, damn near perfectly. Yeah. Oh, you're good. I'm gonna hire you. Grab your special sauce. Okay. Give me two circles. Yep. And now give me one circle. You are good. Oh, I'm so proud oh, of you. Look at, thank you, thank you, Cole. <laughs> yes. Top one. And there you go. You wow. are now the manager at Slutty Vegan. <laughs> I just made some vegan burgers. They look absolutely delicious. Pinky Cole might hire me. You might catch me in the A a little longer than you expected. Yes. 
How is that not beef? <laughs> it's good, right? <laughs> well, you know what's so incredible about this burger? There is no way that you couldn't tell me that that wasn't beef. You kind of get that creaminess from your, yes. from your secret slut sauce. A little spice, you get a little acidity, you get some tanginess from that. Uh, the jalapenos just put it to that next level, mm -hmm. and it's absolutely delicious, and I'm having one more bite. Yes! Well, I'm sold. This woman is a vegan burger genius. It's easy to envision slutty vegan locations popping up all over the country, and Pinky is determined to make it happen. I feel this hip hop energy, I feel the culture, I feel you in this space. I'm wondering like why this location? I mean, this is an iconic Atlanta neighborhood, but why do you want to put one here? So if anybody knows anything about the Slutty Vegan story, I'm really intentional about where I put Slutty Vegan. Right. So I put them in food insecure areas, vegan insecure areas, and areas that aren't so very attractive to developers. I want to go into communities where you can put a black owned business as a staple in that area and rise that community up. Up. Unhealthy ain't got no color. Right. <laughs> right. Right? Like, there are people that are black, white, Asian, blue, yellow, it don't matter, yep. that don't know about food. Yep. And I like to say that Slutty Vegan is the most beautiful form of silent protest mm -hmm. because in the wake of George Floyd and everything that happened, we brought people together in the name of food. Yep. Nobody looks at color when they walk through the door. Right. Right? People look at, like, how can I fellowship with somebody who thinks like me, talks like me, listens to the same music like me, and that is what makes us special. And some people may say, well, burgers and fries, but we no. all know that it's so much, it's bigger, so than much that. bigger than that. Bigger is right. And there's no better example of that than the work of the Pinky Cole Foundation. With some fresh vegan burgers and fries in hand, we headed over to the Foundation HQ to see some black girl magic in action. I see a little piece of that, uh, that vegan bacon that I was blown away yes. by. So I'm going to start with that bite right there. Yes. You know what's so funny? I probably have eaten over... <laughs> a thousand sandwiches since mm -hmm. 2018. Oh, I bet. And it never gets old. So many things have happened in your life to give us the pinky call that we have today. Can you tell me a little about your family, upbringing? Where, where did all this start? So, my mother and my father are Jamaican. And the day that I was born, my father was being sentenced to 22 years in prison. So I was getting a freedom and he was losing his. Wow. And what it showed me is it showed me no matter what the circumstance, you can still rise above it. Mm -hmm. My father literally would call me for the 22 years that he was in jail, he would call me in prison, telling me to read books, telling me about stocks. So although he wasn't physically present, he was there, right? And then I watched my mother work multiple jobs every day, and it taught me how not to be lazy. So talk, talk to me about the importance of building generational wealth. And also, I mean, to get there, that importance of breaking some generational patterns that a lot of times people get stuck in and don't allow them to achieve the greatness that we're all capable of, but, you know, not always being ready. Yeah, the truth is this. Sometimes we get stuck in a space that, oh, they don't want us to win or they don't want us to get here. No, we're here. Yeah. Been and and we and we've been, been here, here, right? Now you just get to see it on this big screen, on this big platform, because I'm showing you what it looks like. 100%. And it don't involve money. No, it's up here. It's, it's up here. here, teaching your children about financial literacy. Because guess what? I'm not teaching just veganism. Yeah. What this is is really building a foundation where people feel like they're safe personally and professionally. I mean, that speaks to that financial literacy that you're teaching and those life skills that you know a lot of people in our community don't have, especially yeah. in lower income neighborhoods and. and and families and just generationally, those things aren't at the forefront of your mind because you're worried about how you're gonna put food on the table the next day, yeah. you're gonna worry about how you're gonna get to regular school, let alone college and all of those things. So mm -hmm. I think it's incredible. The things that you've benefited from, you're able to take those and share those with your community. What we get to do is we make entrepreneurship cool. Right. Like entrepreneurship should never feel like a job, this right. your dream. Yeah. Being smart is cool. Being smart is cool. <laughs> right? Learning about credit is cool. cool. Financial literacy and life insurance is cool. So you and Derek are clearly some of the biggest driving forces in food, in philanthropy, in entrepreneurship, in the city of Atlanta. So, wow, I would love to tell you all the things about his brand. I've never eaten his food because he <laughs> don't sell anything that I eat. <laughs> However, um, I, I respect him for his willingness to like really get back to the community like I do. It was because of George Floyd. Yep. His windows got busted out. And I reached out to him and offered him some help. He didn't need it, but yeah. we just started building together. We're the same. Like, yep. we are two of the most prominent business owners in the city. So we use that and we pour back money, resources, all of that good stuff into the community because we want to see change. That's a, that's a big weight to carry. How does it feel being a black woman that is you running the city? It feels so good. I bet. Right? Um, 
We are in the new black Hollywood. Mm -hmm. We are in Wakanda. <laughs> This is the place where you can be anything that you want to be. Yep. We got the best food in Atlanta, the biggest opportunities in music and television in Atlanta, the wealthiest black people in Atlanta, and the ideal essence of black excellence in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. So to be able to be at the top of the list, I'm not worthy, but I'm here. But you're here, <laughs> and yes, and yes you are. I, I am here and I don't take that for granted because I know how valuable the city is to the world. So to be able to be at the forefront of that in such a rich city, mm -hmm. it feels good. Derek and Pinky's efforts have made differences in countless lives the last few years. You get a sense that they would have been successful no matter what industry they chose. I'm just fortunate they chose food. Witnessing their passion and hearing their stories reminds me of everything I love about Atlanta. It's a place where black people are pushing the city forward and making it a better place for everyone. With people like Pinky and Derek leading the way, I don't see that stopping anytime soon. Where we reimagine fast food in our own creative ways. I didn't think this was possible. <laughs> My remix of the Wendy's Baconator is pancetta served over U10 diver scallops. Wow, it's a taste bomb that goes off in your mouth. <laughs> I'm a vegan, okay? Oh no. Smell the Burger King. Hell yeah. I would pay a thousand dollars for this. I love cooking. Look how gooey that is. It's about 50% dough and 50% cheese. Just like me. <laughs> Fast Foodies. New season premieres January 27th on True TV.